Do you remember that line in Armageddon? Talk about the wrong stuff. Well, <laughs> Obliterated is a new Netflix action comedy series that's a mix of Spies Like Us and The Hangover, with an ensemble group of Special Forces members. It's ridiculous and it's over the top, but is it entertaining? After an elite Special Forces team thwarts a deadly Russian threat to Las Vegas, they party like there's no tomorrow. After their celebration, filled with booze, drugs, and sex, the team discovers that the bomb they deactivated was a fake. The now intoxicated team has to fight through their impairments, overcome their personal issues, find the real bomb, and save the world. So we got this team made up of CIA, Army, Air Force, and NSA members who are tasked with capturing a dangerous weapon. They're ragtag and somewhat dysfunctional, but after they successfully achieve their goal, they find out they were duped and now are on a race against the clock to discover the location of the real weapon before it's used on Las Vegas. Now, the crux of the story relies on complicated setups that go awry and then lead to another complication, which is then repeated over and over. There's inherent drama built into the story, especially as our heroes encounter deadly obstacles and face peril. Now, this portion works because the foes they encounter are ruthless and motivated. The personal drama that exists between the characters, on the other hand, it's, it isn't nearly as convincing or as engaging. Now, the dialogue, it's dire in this. Simple quips with just a ton of pro-America and military jargon. And unsubtle exposition dumps where characters over-explain all of their plans and thoughts. I mean, it's ridiculous how the script believes that anything and everything must be accompanied by a verbal summary, treating the audience just like absolute morons. And then, in simplistic fashion, the show plays on Cold War-era tropes where the Russians are trying to nuke the U.S. I mean, it feels like the story was pulled from the dusty shelves of the 80s and then given a once-over to include some modern aesthetics while keeping the overall ancient plot. Now, I like that while the characters are all stereotypical personifications of tropes, like we've got the nerdy tech geek, the overly ambitious woman in charge who constantly has to prove her worth, or even the straight-laced teetotaler with hidden relationship issues, the actors, they fully embrace their characters and play them with abandon. Nick Zano plays Chad, and <laughs> really, could there be any more of a generic male American jock name? But this dude, he looks like Rosamund Pike with a beard. Now, he's a stereotypical pretty boy with lots of brawn, but only some brains. And he spouts so many college frat boy one-liners that are also filled with just bravado and machismo, it becomes ridiculous. Now, Shelly Henning is the team lead, Ava, and she's assertive and intelligent, but constantly has to justify her position and authority. Now, for a military operation, it is a bit weird to have the leader consistently questioned, but that's what's included in the story to really just amp up conflict. Now, she grew on me as the episodes went along, but she was still abrasive enough that it was hard to fully connect with her. Now, if you have ever had a hankering to get a glimpse of C. Thomas Howell's junk, eh, you're in luck because the show delivers. I wasn't, but whatever. Now, in fact, really every one of the main cast members, they get naked at one point or another during the eight episodes. So if you are here for that, you're going to be good to go. There are a lot of ongoing gags with each of the characters that stem from their drug and alcohol intake at their celebration. Now, these are meant to create laughs, but the setups and the executions are so bland and predictable that there's no humor to them. Now, for example, part of the team takes Molly, along with massive amounts of alcohol, edibles, and then some psychedelics, which have extended goofy effects, including hallucinations and characters seeing vibrantly colorful views. Now, another is on the constant hunt for food, but he's always ending up being shorted before he can get a meal. Now, the bumbling goof-ups are made for cheap and immature laughs, but instead, they just become annoying due to their mindless repetition. I mean, like, these are repeated so many times throughout the show. Now, some of the action, I think, is exciting, but most times it's distractingly cut into very quick edits. And it's a shame, too, because there are a lot of sequences that allow for close quarters battles and hand-to-hand -hand fights that use just all sorts of weapons, including improvised ones where, you know, characters make creative use of just ordinary objects. Now, when we do get the violence, at least it's brutal. I mean, the camera doesn't shy away from penetrating headshots and body parts that get blown apart. A CGI for blood spurts, it's pretty fake, but it's also usually at a distance, so it's not too distracting. 
Something hugely positive about the action is that there is a sequence in episode five that features a one shot that is creatively executed and it looks amazing. I mean, it's immersive and filled with energy that appropriately captures the tension and the urgency of the conflict. And after seeing this part, I was really hoping for more. But despite having opportunities to deliver in the show, it only utilizes that awesome strategy once. As far as the overall plot goes, it's very obvious and unfortunately follows much of the same template from episode to episode. The team tries to complete the mission, is met with an obstacle or complication, and then must figure out how to overcome that hurdle while at least one member of the team also gets themselves into some tangential hairy situation that further complicates things. Then the team resolves the issue in front of them and goes on to the next episode to do it all over again. And when this repeated cadence is present in each episode, I began to feel the length of the show. The eight episodes are each around 45-ish minutes, but I don't think the show needed to contain as many dilemmas as the characters face. The story will still continue to follow the same path and can still reach the same conclusion without all the length. Now, the only way I could get through this without giving myself a lobotomy was to view the show as a satire of America. The ending even has a circle jerk to Chance of America that's pretty in your face and on the nose with excessive patriotism. I mean, the satirical level isn't anywhere close to being as clever or deep as the boys, but it does do its best to poke fun at the blind admiration and nationalism that's on display by the characters. So when watched with that mindset of satire, I mean, this can work and be somewhat entertaining, but it's still repetitive with overly simplified dialogue and a shallow and uncomplicated storyline. I mean, this is exactly what you'd expect with the plot. So the mindless narrative and the presentation could be just what you need if you're looking for something casual and ridiculous. Now, if you enjoyed other shows like The Recruit or The Night Agent, you may get a kick out of this one. There's a very similar vibe to all three shows. This one, though, is way more juvenile and simple with the spy versus spy repetitive antics and run-of-the-mill plot trajectory. So overall, Obliterated is a simplistic action comedy that panders to its audience by delivering mindless violence with entry-level dialogue. Stereotypical characters over-explain decisions and repetitive plot gags become mundane. But at least there's some exciting action that delivers on the brutality. The pace appears to be quick and energetic, but because the plot points are rehashed and repeated, this ends up dragging out the narrative far longer than it needs to be. From a satirical view, this attacks with claws out, but it doesn't appear the story knows it's being satirized, creating a cringy aura with an excessive helping of nationalism. There is a ton of sex, nudity, almost nonstop profanity, and a lot of violence. I give Obliterated one and a half out of five couches. So what are you binging right now? Anything you can recommend to me? Let me know in the comments below. If you enjoyed this review, please give it a like. Also, don't forget to share and subscribe. I'm Chris. This is Movies and Munchies. Thanks for couching with me.